Hey there everyone, my name's Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back to update number six on the Galaxy Class 1000 scale project and first of all, thank you so much for the wonderful support on the last video. You guys are absolutely amazing and we are well on our way to that 1000 subscriber goal for the 1000 scale Galaxy Class project. So thank you so much. Today in this update, going to start working on getting those smart LEDs installed for the Arduino to drive. Also means I'm going to have to create some trenches in those pylons because we need to get extra wires up to the warp engines. I thought about using the brass tube to use as a wire, but I figure it's best just to create a channel, put down some wire, fill it in, patch it up, nobody will ever see it, and we'll get some proper wires. I'm actually gonna put one extra, one more than I think that we're gonna need just in case, because I don't wanna have to go through the process of trenching that out a second time. We're gonna try to get the lighting into the warp nacelles as well and get that kind of figured out. And I wanna start working on the light blocking for the windows, well not light blocking, but the masking for the windows on the neck section. There's also some refinement on some of those parts that I discovered that uh, needs to be done when I did the dry fit together to get that nice lighted shot uh, for the thumbnail for the last video. So there's some, some areas where the resin just needs to be cleaned up. We'll take care of that as well. I'm excited. Things are moving forward. I've seen some of the initial test runs on the Arduino effects uh, for the Starship, and it is going to be absolutely amazing. There's also some things that I want to start considering about the saucer section. Do I want both top and bottom phaser effects on this project. If I do, I need to start thinking about how I'm going to rework the armature so that I can put the LEDs into the bottom phaser array. Things are moving along, let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. So first step of reorganizing all the lighting is to pull the old lighting out. Now the 0402 SMDs have remained inside, but I've pulled the four strips of dumb LED lights out. There was one here, 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 and here. And this is actually a really good demonstration of why you don't want paint on your joint seams. These were epoxied in place onto the surface which had been painted, and they actually came off very easily because they were only attached to the paint. They weren't actually bonded to the plastic. This meant that they peeled off easily, peeling the paint up. So the, the, the lesson here is that you wanna make sure that you do leave your joints unpainted because even if you use very strong epoxy, it, it'll pull the paint up and your joints could come undone. Now that's more than enough to hold this lighting in. It's actually kind of overkill to hold the lighting in, but it would not be strong enough to hold all these parts together. So the light blocking in the white has been repainted in here. So what I'm gonna do next is get the smart LEDs lined up, figure out exactly where they're gonna go. And then I've gotta really be strategic in how I'm gonna wire them up because all of the data wires are gonna be chained up so that we can address all of the LEDs individually. So I've gotta plan out uh, it's going to come out of the pipe here and then it's probably going to work from the back forward and then up the neck is what I'm thinking. So I've got to be really strategic because I want to get these wired up before I get them in but then I've got to take into account where else their wire is going to be going afterwards. And um, I did put some down here and some in the front the last time I did this but I'm thinking maybe just a few in the back, uh, a few here like I did before and then maybe on either side of the pipe would uh, possibly be a good idea. We'll see, but I'm gonna get those all wired up and kind of plan out where the wiring is gonna go because that's gonna be the, the, the biggest challenge in doing the lighting this way is being strategic from the get-go on where the wires are gonna go. I've been trying to work out how I'm gonna connect the model to the Arduino especially since it's got to be shipped to Belgium and I'm likely going to pack the base and the model separately. So what I've worked out, this is the line that's going to go to the first LED strip inside the model for the windows. And what I've done is uh, it's, a, it's the data cable and so it's got a 
resistor for the data cable right here. And this is a prefab clip cable. And uh, this is the female end. And what I'm gonna do is imagine this is white because I'm gonna color code it all. It's gonna go into pin six, which we're currently using um, as the test program to run the lights inside the ship. And this will go down the post, this will be inside the base, and the instructions that the client will get to be, will be to connect the white to the white, just like, just like that. And I think that's gonna be a very easy way to allow the client to connect the base to the model without having to solder anything or worry about crazy connections. So I think this is gonna work out quite well. Let's walk through the process of setting up these LEDs. I am removing the LED on either end of the strip. The terminals are just too small if you cut it down that line, so I need the extra space that removing the end LEDs affords me on those terminals. So we're going to cut and then peel back part of the adhesive backing to expose the terminals. Next, we're gonna use a pin vise and create a very small hole, just big enough for a tinned wire to fit through. What this is going to do is it's going to create a physical connection with the LED strip, not just a soldered connection and will be much stronger. So once we get the wires tinned up, they are gonna be fed through that small hole. We're going to keep the top of it kind of pointed up and we're going to add a little bit of solder. Next, after this solder goes down, we're going to bend the end of the wire down and then hit it again with a little bit of heat from the solder iron to create that final connection. And that is going to be super strong. For demonstration purposes, now I have the completed LED strip for the secondary hull in the model, it's just taped in place, and I'm gonna turn it on for you so you see what's going on, and I'll put the top onto it. Now, I will warn you, you may see some flickering. We are sorting through that issue. We're not sure if it's a matter of how many LEDs are connected, uh, given the resistance that the very thin 30 gauge wire will add to the circuit, or if it's a matter of how it's connected through the breadboard, or if it's got something to do with the program. We're working through that. Everything that we are doing at the moment is still experimental and is subject to change at any time. And as you can see, as I lay that on there, uh, it did flicker out, but this gives you a bit of an idea of the light distribution. It may look a little blue on camera, that is okay. The lighting color is adjustable in the sketch. And also, um, if the flickering that you're seeing has to do with powering the LEDs, we also have a way to self-power the LEDs so that will not be a problem. But this just gives you a bit of an overview of how that internal window lighting is starting to shape out using the new addressable LEDs. Now that the issues with the LED strips for the secondary hull and most of the window lighting are solved, I'm moving on to a whole different part of the ship, sussing out a different issue that needs to be dealt with. And these are the 3030 SMD chips that are for the phaser strips, the phaser array. And I decided that using these individual chips is gonna be a lot easier than trying to mess around with cutting up the LED strips. Now, the issue I had with these is that the back of it just essentially has these terminals on them. And there's no data as far as which terminal is for what. And I thought I had figured out what was supposed to go where for power, but it just was not working. And I literally sat here with my clip cables and just switched everything around until finally, after using up three of the chips and uh, trying almost every single uh, orientation of setting up the wires, I finally figured it out. And so if I turn on the power, this SMD is going to go bright. Now, I'm using just a testing sketch on the Arduino, so any of the lights I'm using, they're, they're just showing up a white to make sure that it works, but that is going to be the perfect size for the phaser strips. So, what I'm gonna do now that I know how this works and that it is working, I'm gonna start going through the process of hooking all of these up around the phaser strip, and I'm not sure how many it's gonna take, but it's gonna be a lot easier hooking these up 
than it would be cutting those LED strips apart and then rewiring them up. So that's going to be a long, tedious job. Just wanted to check in quickly in the middle of this update. I've been working extensively with those LEDs and the Arduino, and I am running into some teething issues with them. Uh, the LEDs that I'm using for the phaser strips, the 3535 SMDs, I hooked two of them up together like they would be in the array, and I got some weird results where one was red, one was green. I separated the second one off and tested just the first individual one, and it turned out blue. So we're just working through some of those issues. This is all, again, very experimental, and we're just figuring things out, figuring out what works, what doesn't, that kind of thing. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a switch in what I'm working on and work on trenching out the pylons to get the extra wires into the warp engines that I need to get in. And I may put a few extras just to be on the safe side. Because I need a minimum of five wires going to the warp nacelle and only four will fit through the brass tube, I need to create a trench in the pylon where I can embed additional wires. The first step is to plan where the trench is going to go. I've marked that out with a Sharpie marker. Then I take the Dremel tool with a carving and engraving bit and carefully remove the resin from the trench, being careful not to go too deep, both to protect the structural integrity of the pylon and to make sure that I don't breach the other side, which has a more detailed surface. Then it's time to embed the wires. I'm securing the wires in place using CA glue and instantly setting it with CA glue kicker. Now that the wires are in place, the next step is to use Ave's two-part epoxy sculpt to fill in the trench. Ave's epoxy sculpt comes in two containers and you mix equal parts A and B together. Once it's fully mixed, let it sit for about five minutes before you use it. As you begin to apply the epoxy sculpt, you can use some water to smooth it out. As you do, less sanding will be needed. Then it's time to sand it down to smooth out the surface. Once done, you'll never be able to tell that any work was done. Well, you might be able to tell that something doesn't look quite right. When I was applying the putty, I heard a crack, which you wouldn't have heard on screen, but the pressure that I was putting on, I was not properly supporting the part underneath and it broke the epoxy seam, which is not a problem. Uh, the seam is really only partially supported when it's just the bottom part that's on. It gets reinforced in a very big way when the top piece goes on. So I will just clean off the putty off of the back here and I will re-epoxy that and there won't be any issue, but I am going to take advantage of this situation and always take advantage of any problems that you have uh, to your advantage. Uh, I'm going to sand this down, the epoxy here, the epoxy sculpt, while it is off of the model, and it's going to make it just that much easier for me to sand it. Hopefully I won't have that problem with this one, but it's not going to be too much of an issue just to reattach this and uh, go from there. But I do like to show the problems as well as the successes. So something really weird is happening with these LEDs. Now, I've got one of the LEDs attached here, and when I turn it on, it's going to actually work properly. It's the right color, it's white, it works flawlessly. But when I try to hook up more than one LED and I turn it on, weird things just happen. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but right now, both of those are yellow and they're supposed to be white. If I turn it off, I'll turn it back on, it could be yellow and green. Turn it off, turn it back on, both yellow again. Sometimes one goes white and I it's only programmed really to, to be turning one of these lights on right now. So it seems that when one of the LEDs is on, it works or, or just to connect it, it works fine. But when two of these are connected, it doesn't. So if you know why this is happening, please leave a comment in the section below and let me know. And that's going to wrap it up for this update on the Galaxy Class project. I've had a lot of fun just trying to play around with these smart LEDs. I mean, it's a whole different world from the way that I've always done models before. We are trying to figure things out. Things aren't necessarily working the first try, but that's part of the fun. Now, if you do have a solution for me as to why those 3535 SMDs 
that are all individual aren't working properly with the Arduino, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I know that both myself and my programmer are going to be really interested to find out what is going on with those because it just doesn't really make sense to us yet. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason and I'm sure we'll figure it out. It's just that we don't know what's going on with it yet. Uh, I may need to resort to cutting up the LED strips to uh, do the phaser array. I might be a little bit more reliable. We'll have to see what's going on, but I've had a lot of fun playing around with those LEDs and we've got the extra wire going through to the one pylon uh, for the nacelle lighting. And I've still got to do the other side and I still have to sand off the putty work that was done. That's just something I'm gonna do in between updates and I'm, I'll make sure that I show that to you once it is all completed. By the time it's done, you'll never know that any work was done on it, which is really cool. So I hope that you've enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit the like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. Remember, we are on the way to 1,000 subscribers for the 1,000 scale Galaxy Class Enterprise D project. So help me out with that by hitting the subscribe button. But for now, my name's Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.